gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is your boy, Stevie Jobber. And it's your boy, Dangerous Duke. And welcome back to the Dangerous Jobbers podcast, putting wrestling over one podcast at a time. Yes, sir. All right, we got a special one for you for the Elimination Chamber Rundown. Um, should we get to our guests? Yeah, that sounds like a plan. So straight off of the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, which took place in Canada, we decided, you know what? Let's try to get some hometown people for this. Luckily, one of them was available, and then we got a suitable replacement for the other one. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Johnny and Simon, welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having us. What's up, guys? Hey, yeah, no doing? problem. Glad to have you guys. So, yeah. first things first, let the people know a little bit about yourselves, what you guys do, and where they can find you. Johnny, we're going to kick it off with you. So I'm Johnny Funko. I run a podcast slash interview show on YouTube where we interview a whole bunch of people uh, from all different backgrounds. Um, yeah. And uh, come check us out. We uh, we have fun. We uh, interview a whole bunch of different people from voice actors to um, uh, music people um, all over the place. We are. Awesome. Sounds good. Simon, let them know a little bit about you. Uh, Simon Crook, you can find me on YouTube. Just search my name. Uh, my niche is Pokemon, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but I've always been a wrestling fan since um, since uh, I can remember. So um, yeah, I'm just I'm glad to be uh, here with you guys. And I also am also a Johnny Funko's in-house moderator for the uh, Johnny <laughs> Funko Friends podcast. Nice. Always need a good moderator, right? Yep. All right, cool. So I guess with that being said, we're going to dive right into these matches. Stevie, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, man. So they started the show off with the women's elimination chamber match. That was for Bianca's uh, world championship at WrestleMania. Um, the women were Asuka, Carmella, Raquel, Nikki Cross, Natalia, and Liv Morgan. Mm -hmm. um, they went a good uh, 18 minutes to yeah. take the show off and um do we do we lead with who won and then talk about how we felt about the match I yeah feel like we can that's do that. a good place to go so oscar won um i believe it came down to oscar and carmella in a a very a very weird way i thought it was hilarious the way they set up the ending for oscar to just kind of take over in the end but how did you guys feel about it um I thought it was an interesting take on it. It was really, um, really weird. I was not expecting it. Like, I thought it was going to be two other wrestlers, to be um, real with you. What about you? I, I think uh, Oscar was going to be the obvious winner. Um, but uh, what I took out of this match was uh, Liv Morgan. Now she's a little bit... Um, I'm not sure if, like, maybe she's been hurt lately because she's been, she either been tapping out or... Submit, uh, submitting lately but her coming off the top ropes and with that big move was kind of nice to see but um i mean i kind of expected oscar to win i'm an oscar fan so um yeah it was a good match i enjoyed it i did i liked it i liked it i liked it a lot yeah i I, I agree with you um i was kind of happy that Liv got to do as much as she did i think her training with natty a lot more lately has kind of improved her repertoire a little bit. I'm a little surprised Natty didn't get to go any longer. I thought I thought Natty would have been probably in the final two just because they were in mm -hmm. Canada. Mm -hmm. And lately with her coming back, I don't mind her being back now. So I kind of wanted her to be in the final two. But at the end of the day, the most predictable pick won, in my opinion. So I can't complain at the end result. Yeah, I was a little I was a little surprised that Natty didn't make it to the final two. That's that's who I thought it would come down to. But it was it was weird watching it because it was almost like Carmella set it up for Oscar to knock it down at the end there. Cause there was about two or three times Carmella just flat out saved Oscar from elimination mm -hmm. for it to come down to the two of them. And then it got down to the two of them and it was like, Well, I'm come on, obviously. Now they're gonna go with Oscar, so now, is it just me, or did Carmella feel like the only person that didn't need to be in that match? 
Well, I mean, apparently she did as the player vehicle for Oscar to win. I could have did with anybody else you in know? that Carmella spot besides Carmella. Yeah, it was so weird. I described it as like watching the final girl kill everyone else before Jason gets there. <laughs> Because every time they had she every every person that could have helped defend her, she helped get eliminated. And then at the end, it was like, oh, what are you going to do now? You mm -hmm. can't run, which was the first thing she tried to do. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, it was it was it was interesting to see. But Liv had a lot of good spots. I thought it was a really good match for Liv, even though she didn't make it to the end. I thought yeah. Natty Natty was a little cleaner and faster in there than she normally is. Mm -hmm. So that was a plus, but it yeah, it kind of ended the way we all thought it would. All right. So all things considered, what grade do you give the match out of like, I don't know, a letter grade? What letter grade would you give the first match? Um, Johnny, let's start with you. I'm a little biased. So my grade might be higher than the rest of you guys. I would say a seven. Um, because it was it was a decent match, but it was not a wow factor for me, you know? Okay. How about you, Simon? Uh, give it like a 7.2 or a B minus. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's yeah, where I Simon. was. Yeah. That's where I was. I, I was on the B minus scale. Yeah, it was, I agree with you. It was a seven or a B minus. It wasn't, it wasn't over the top, but it did what it needed to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very solid. All right, well, let's move on to Brock and Bobby. Um. All right. Was anybody you know thrilled with the way this thing went down? Or I was gonna say let's let let's let uh, Simon take this one first. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess Brock's Canadian, so I mean the crowd reaction was pretty typical. But um, for me, I I saw this. I you know you, you kind of think that it would have gone this way through submission. I'm not sure if they would have let Brock lose, but I think they. It was plotted for him to to walk away as the as the loser. So typical of him being disqualified. I think this is interesting now because I think that as he was walking away, he was staring at a W C W belt that a fan had that was showing at him was mm -hmm. that was showing in his face, and he stopped and looked and stared at it. So you know, I kind of wonder if this leads to, you know, the end of his, what's that to do with what's happening? Where is he going in the W in the uh, WE or is he going to go to WCW? Cause his contract ending on, you know, it kind of, Oh, you mean a uh, AEW? AEW, sorry. But um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go from here. Are we going to see him anytime soon now after this? That is an interesting question. I, I didn't did. notice that. That's a good eye. Well, did it, was anybody expecting the hurt business? I feel like part of me, no, not a chance. Nah, I, I think if they would have did the hurt business thing, it probably would have. They probably would have saved it for Mania if they were planning on pulling the mm. trigger on it again. Yeah. Does this lead to a third one? I mean, Bray said he wanted whoever won, but you mean a fourth felt one? Like such a. <laughs> te technically, this is the fourth. If they do it at Mania, it's the fourth one. Because oh, technically, yeah. Yeah, because what Brock had. Brock won the first one, I think, then Bobby, mm -hmm. and, and then this one was DQ. So, I mean, yeah. Mania, most likely. That's probably going to be where they put the nail in the coffin for this. All right. Well, we'll have to see what they do with, with Bray. I don't know what uh, what they had planned for him, because if, if it kind of ends fair, where nobody really comes out on top, does that, what does that mean for Bray? Or do they take it one more pay-per-view, if there's anything in between this? Mm, I'll say it was the mania. It's gonna I me personally, I say it ends at mania with Bobby on top. And then I don't know, some I guess if they really want to pull the trigger with Bray, have Bray go after Bobby or because he's the winner. Because mm -hmm. after that, I don't see Brock sticking around much longer, still on that part-time deal. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. All right. Well, moving on to other dark figures. Well, hold on. I, I was going to see yeah. because I'm pretty sure we all have the same grade, but what's our grades for this match? I give it a four. <laughs> yeah, I really don't like this at all. I was bored. I don't care for either wrestler. Oh. I'm giving it a three. A three. Okay. 
<laughs> um, man, I'm gonna seem so generous. Can I give it a five? I'll give it a five. Oh, that's way too generous. It. I mean, <laughs> it's a Brock and Bobby match. Not no no discredit to Bobby, but Brock doesn't. I mean, the Goldberg the most ma- intricate of matches. The Goldberg match was better. We at least got a solid winner out of that one. No, I, you know what? It really killed. It was the ending. The ending yeah. sucked so bad that he just took the easy way out. It was like, mm-hmm. uh, it didn't even seem close. Well, it did seem close, but it didn't seem they like they got um, as into the match as they should have before he just kind of called it off there. Yeah. So I guess you're right. I guess you're, it was bad. It was bad. You're right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It was bad. All right. Um, so let's get into the uh the mixed tag match. We got uh Finn Balor and the number one contender for the SmackDown Women's Championship, Rhea Ripley, against Edge and uh Beth Phoenix, who was channeling like a big Luna Vachon vibes with the you know what the vault face pain and I was pleasantly surprised with this match. Yeah. It did good. I mean, Beth had a few botches in the match. Some of them were easy to spot. Some of them weren't. But, I mean, when you're retired for as long as she's been, she's not going to be perfect in the ring. She's already established herself. Yeah. So, for for how the match played out itself, I, I liked the match. The only thing I would have done differently, I would have brought in Ray at some point to try to, like, even it up to take out Dom and set mm-hmm. up their Mania match. But aside from that, they did what they were supposed to do. The crowd was into it. They loved it. Edge got a huge pop. So I re- the right person won, in my opinion. So I don't have any complaints with it. And what about you guys? I actually enjoyed this match. Um, it was a really decent match. I, I, I'm a big Edge fan, so I liked it a little bit more than most. Um, but I really enjoyed the match. I felt like they it was a solid match. Yeah. Really- yeah, I think it was a good match. I liked it. I'm becoming a Ripley fan, mm. um, and um, and uh, the Ray Mysterio thing is is really cool. I like that. And I heard <clears throat> the fans were really ripping into him. And like the star of that match was actually Ray, was Ray Mysterio, um, his son. So like, mm-hmm. uh, it was fun. Um, it was a good match. Yeah, I like I like the way they put it together. They they took a good bit of time and. Um, I was surprised Beth was so over. Beth looked so even compared to Rhea Ripley, and they they very rarely do that. Yeah, so they, I, I dug that. They were like they were like literally the same. It was like the same build, the same exact height. It was like perfectly matched. Yeah, they look great in there. Um, and it's good that they they took the the opportunity to put Edge over mm-hmm. um in Canada, even though Rhea Ripley was probably the favorite since she was number one contender. Yeah, but it's good that they did this. They needed this. I was expecting, um, I was expecting the Dom and Ray thing to go a little further than it did, but it's fine. They got to pull the trigger on it eventually. Mm-hmm. We've been a ride if, if they didn't come on top. Sure. We needed one Canadian to win, you know. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And of all absolutely. the Canadians, Edge. I'm sorry, Edge got seniority, so he's going to be the one to get the hometown win. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, all things considered, I'm giving this match an, I'm gonna give it an eight. An eight. It was I good. give it an eight. Um, I'll give it a seven. The seven and a half. I won't give it the eight, but I'll give it a seven and a half. It was solid. Okay. What about you two? I'm gonna give it an eight as well. I really yeah. enjoyed the match. Uh, I say seven point eight. I give it a a, a B. A B. A solid B. Solid B. Yeah, solid B. Solid B. Solid B. Yeah, I, I can could agree with that. that. All right. On to the other Elimination Chamber match. Uh, it's for the United States Championship, which is a, ver- a first, I- I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I don't think they've ever did it for the U.S. title before, but I'll give them credit. I I, I enjoyed a bit of the match. So it was, uh, it was Austin Theory, the champ. Mm-hmm. Montez Ford, who we got to see come out on his own, and um, the Street Profits was still on the Titan Tron, but the attire was all him. Um, Bronson Reed, Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, and uh, Seth Rollins. So 
there was a couple different stories being told in here. They did the Logan Paul. Um, they launched the Logan Paul set story to kind of end the match. I don't like how that looks like you're on someone else's side. <laughs> but... It's not, I swear it's not product placement at all. <laughs> yeah, Theory ends up walking away. Was anybody surprised? I was. I, I wish somebody else won. I, I didn't like the ending. Mm-hmm. Mm, I, I was surprised at Logan coming out. Not so much at the ending, but Logan having some did kind of surprise me. I don't know. I felt like this was the most predictable one, but at the same time for me, I felt like it was the it was the most predictable one, but at the same time it was very entertaining. Like I called it at some point this is going to include Logan Paul. Um I think I called the last three being Seth, Austin Theory and Tez, and I definitely thought Austin Theory was walking away with it. I just wasn't sure where Logan Paul was going to come in. But the moment they hit that curb stop on Tez and the door opened, I was like, oh, I've seen this before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Second. I've seen too much edge in Elimination Chambers to know what happens next. <laughs> I, I said it last night on the on the live stream that we were on. Don't you find it a little odd that Logan does the buckshot lariat finisher better than Hangman Adam mm-hmm. Page? He does, yeah. though, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's really, uh, it's really interesting. Simon, what did you think of the ending? Uh, it was interesting, uh, like how they were going to get Logan involved in the match, and they used the stomp to open up the cage. They carried him out, which gave opportunity to come in. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of interesting. So, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Pokemon fan, so I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm interested to see where this Logan Paul thing's going to go. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, it I was can, a good I match. Behind that, yeah. yeah. And I was, I do got to say one thing I'm really happy about, and I said it last night, so I'm going to say it again. I love the performance Montez Ford had because we've actually seen him perform live. I think it was a SmackDown where he fought Roman one on one. Yeah. And like, after, like, of all the shows I've been to, he's probably the smoothest guy I've seen work live. So to see him actually get a chance to be in a match by himself without a partner for a title was actually pretty dope. And I don't think he disappointed. Yeah. I think he looked very believable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That match might've been uh, a a good breakout performance for him, which I think was probably the goal. Yeah. I feel like we're going to be seeing another Otis, you know, where (laughs) where, where they try to give him the singles push and see what happens. Yeah. Hey, I wouldn't be mind with him holding the money in the bank contract at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just to test the waters. Mm-hmm. All right. So do we do we talk about the tragic main event? Uh yeah, let's <laughs> let, let let's get to the tragic main event. Um, so they was and they did such a good job at promo for this. Mm-hmm. Before we get into it, the story, the way they kept retelling the story, but it was it felt so good. This was like one of the best, um, the best stories told in like the last few years, probably, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn comes out last um with the with his old music. Mm-hmm. Pop just as big as it was on Friday. Yeah. Yeah, they were going crazy in there. And it was it was pay-per-view, so they were able to get the FU Roman chants off mm-hmm. without bleeping the audio. So cool. Um, yeah. I think Sammy did a, a very good job taking him to the limit. I think by the end of the match or by the time Jimmy intervened, it felt like Sammy was a real main eventer and uh, he might be able to do this. Yeah. Um, Jay came in. Jay didn't officially choose a side still, I think. Um, because he ended up getting taken out by Sammy by accident. Mm-hmm. Not sure where that's gonna lead, but Sammy ended up taking the L after he hit Jay by accident. 
and uh, Roman tore him down with that chair. Um, so it cheated to win the match. I guess you could say there's an asterisk, well, um, guy, but there either always way, is. either way, Roman comes out, um, and they go to finish him off, and Kevin Owens saves the day. Got to have the other Canadian there, which we knew Kevin would. We knew Kevin would get in at some point, but. I mean, you guys were, you you know, it's better to hear from you guys. What were you guys feeling um, about the end there? I didn't mind the ending, but I th- I feel like um, I think Kevin coming out was kind of a distraction from Sammy's win. So it, it, I, I feel like that could be a thing that's happening, like to put him into a tag team with the Usos against Kevin Owens and Sammy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But I, I don't think it worked. I think the fans were still upset as hell. Like, there was complete silence after Roman Reigns won. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, we're not going to get over that. Like, that Kevin thing in. But no, I don't think it's it's going to work, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's um, I, With the, the way the crowd was, you kind of wonder if they were going backstage thinking like, okay, do we give them the belt? Let them run with it for a couple of weeks and get, you know, give it back. Like, but at the end of the day, you know, leading up to WrestleMania, I don't think they want, they're going to switch it up and give it to him. I think we knew that obviously that somehow we he was going to, right. But they, they didn't want the crowd to riot. So they had to mm-hmm. bring in Owens for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and people are saying, okay, wow. Well, Than he did to him in a sense, you know, waiting till the last minute to kind of put things to an end. So you kind of interest, kind of wondering, uh, like, why they didn't come up and, like, maybe, you know, shake each other's. Oh, I don't think that maybe Sammy is, is really gonna, would be a good fit for the belt, but. Yeah, th- th- that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, is Sammy actually doing a better job at this than Kevin did in three matches? Because I, I honestly think this one match Sammy had with Roman was better than all three title matches Kevin had with Roman. 100%. I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. Um, It's crazy. It's crazy to see um just that sheer disappointment. Like, you, got, you guys are right. Like, it felt like something that even though we kind of knew was inevitable, it still felt like, man, you really had me there for a moment. Like, yeah. You gave and, us hope. Yeah. And especially, especially in Canada, like the pop he was getting, I almost thought that maybe Friday when Sammy came out at the end of the show, that was them trying to decide. Mm-hmm. But it maybe maybe I was just fooling myself, you know. <laughs> but they popped so loud, you thought maybe they're maybe they're you know looking at each other back there, like maybe maybe we can do this. Mm-hmm. Maybe it yeah. wouldn't be so bad to just give them the belt until Mania, but they didn't pull the trigger on it. Yeah. And even Sam, I think Sammy felt it too, because mm-hmm. uh, I remember Sammy going online. Um, after the show and being like man or it was in the press conference and he was like man I just I feel so bad for everybody else like we know the chapter is over we know this it was only going to end one of two ways but at the same time it still feels like like there had to be a few people in in creative that were going man we might have made the wrong decision Mm -hmm. yeah because I certainly thought they thought about it they certainly thought about it for sure right yeah, because that pop, if he would have won the world title in Canada My against against the guy right now, the, the roof would have been off the arena. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, man, it and I, I, I was thinking about it going into it like he's got. He had like Mick Foley levels of of just underdog yeah. He like it was on a different level. Where like, you know, it felt like he was never supposed to be here, but he was here, you know, Mm -hmm. he made it all this way. And uh, man, I felt like if they chose to go a different way, nobody would have been upset about it. And they had his wife there too on the side. And she was, she did such a great job, didn't she? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man, such a great oh. job. That was such a rough kiss, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, 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 uh-huh. It was pretty rough. It was I was like, rough. okay, Sammy, what if, you don't got to be that serious with it now. Yeah. I was wondering if you missed her mouth or something. <laughs> <laughs> Grab her head, pull it in close. Next thing you know, he just kisses her forehead. Oh, man. Oh, All that hair, man. All right, yeah. so considering this match and everything that happened before the match, during the match, and at the end, what grade are you guys giving this match? I'm giving it a strong eight. Like I really enjoyed it. I love. I loved Sammy. Sammy did amazing. I think he, his performance was off the charts. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't think he was gonna um, stand so like head to head with Roman. You know, I thought he was gonna mostly be down and out at, and maybe get a few shots here and there. But he was holding his own. You know. Hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. An eight or an A minus, for mm-hmm. sure. I'm I'm gonna give it a nine. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed this match. I thought it was the best match of the <laughs> night for me. I mean, ending aside, could, because of the J thing, I thought they could have did the J thing a little differently. Yeah, but I mean, still probably the best match of the night so far in WWE. We're only in February, but I'll say it's the best match they've had all year. So it gets a nine for me. Yeah, it was definitely one of the better matches they've had. Um, one of the better matches that Romans had, and it felt like it felt like a WrestleMania night. It felt like a preview of of WrestleMania. I'll give it an I'll give it an A minus for that. I just, you know, I can't give him I can't give him the ten out of ten only because I felt like they missed such a big moment, mm-hmm. and I hate to miss. I hate I hate moments that I felt like you could have did that differently, you know. Mm. And any moment where you could have left that and been like, "Man, y'all could have y'all could have did something else there." If yeah, there's right. ever a what if, I feel like I can't give you the ten out of ten. It has Maybe. to end the way it felt like it should have end, and it it didn't feel like that. It felt like we we should have went the other way with this. Yeah, I was gonna say if you ever get that opportunity to catch that lightning in a bottle, you gotta catch it while you can. And I, mm-hmm. I feel like they missed their opportunity to catch that lightning in a bottle. That's why I gave it the nine. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. All right, but I think that wraps it up for us, guys. Um, where do you where do you guys what do you guys think uh WrestleMania is now? Is it it's gonna be Roman versus Cody? Does Roman get another match? Does Roman win at WrestleMania? What happens here? Before we I'm leave? hearing I'm hearing rumors that it might be a three way, but I, I I doubt it. But that would be really interesting to that see. That would be like, amazing, wouldn't it? Was Roman, Sammy? Cody, Sammy. That would be insane because they're be kind of hinting at. They're kind of hinting. Yeah, it's gonna fix it, and it's kind of hinting because of Cody and um, um, uh, Sammy kind of talking. You know, on mm-hmm. yeah, on Raw, mm-hmm. yeah. You know what? I wouldn't mind that. Not at all. Simon, what do you I, think? Um, I, I think Sammy is probably has gone as far as he's going to go for now. Mm-hmm. I think what, what we're going to see is we're going to see Cody and Reigns at WWE. That's, that's the promotion that's going to go all the way through. And then we're going to see Cody come take the title and come full circle for him and his father. Okay. All right, man. Um, right, well, that, that wraps it up for the run down. Yeah, I, I got one more question for the both of them. Do you think at any point, if let's say Cody wins the title at Mania and it comes full circle like it's supposed to, do you see a point in time where Jay turns on Roman? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. you see that. Coming? All right, all right. Yep. All right, I, I just wanted to make sure because I wanted it to happen at Mania, but right now it's not looking like it. But I just yeah. wanted, I wanted at some point this year, mm-hmm. it'll happen. He's tired of it, he's tired of being picked on, you know. Mm-hmm. All right. That was my last question I had to get out there. Stevie, I'll let you take us home on this one since I'm always the one taking us home. Oh, man. All right. Um, well, before we get out of here, one more time, guys, tell them where they can find you. Uh, it's Johnny Funko, and we do the Funko Friends podcast every Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern. You can find me at Johnny's podcast, and uh, you can find me at by looking up Simon Crook on uh, YouTube. 
Yes, yes. The moderator extraordinaire for the Funko Friends podcast. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, that does it for the Elimination Chamber Rundown. Um, like, share, subscribe. We'll be on Spotify. We'll be on YouTube. We'll be on all uh, listening platforms. So um, wherever you can find us, if you like this, if you, you know, tell us in the comments um, what you felt about everybody's uh, reflection, everybody's review. Um, and until the next time, guys, uh, stay up, stay blessed, and stay dangerous. Oh, no, no.